chisel. That was so loud. How did nothing break? Yeah, see? Like I said, my kids won't be able to break this restaurant where if I can't break it, they're not gonna be able to break it. All right. Shake up a martini, pull up a chair, and let's go thrifty. This is Mid-Century Wasting. Welcome to Mid-Century Wasted. I'm Jamie. Thank you for joining me today. I have a haul video for you. It's been a little while since I've sat at the dining table and done this with you. I have the stuff that I bought at the most recent Shop With Me video. It was an estate sale in Lakewood, California, and it was a doozy. So if you missed that Shop Along With Me video, you might want to go check that out first unless you are prone to getting dizzy <laughs> or you get some sort of uh, heebie-jeebies from people digging around in dirty piles of stuff, then maybe you just skip it and you just stay here and watch what I got instead. Because it was, it, was, it was something, it was something else over there. So I'm gonna show you what I got and it's not much and it's not much. So I'm also going to show you a lot of things that I got at a different estate sale before this one that I did not film at. It was kind of an impromptu thing and I wasn't really thinking about it and I just rushed in and grabbed some goodies and rushed out. So I'll show you what I got at that one too. But first let's talk about this Lakewood estate sale a little, just a little bit. It was kind of insane. First of all, I got there late and by late, I mean after opened after it started. Usually if I'm going to an estate sale around here, keep in mind I haven't been going to estate sales for a very long time. I've been doing online estate sales which I have now re-remembered <laughs> why I like the online ones so much more now. <laughs> but anyway, previously before the world turned upside down, I would always go to an estate sale around here very, very early. If it had things, vintage things, anything that really looked like something I would want, I always got there way well before they open, hours before they open, hours before a list would even go out or anything like that. So this time I did not. I got there a couple hours after they had already opened on the first day of the sale. Blake is at work, at work, at home. Uh, he's a teacher, so he's still working right now. Normally when I would do estate sales, it would be during the summer when he's just home with the kids. So instead it was like, well, I'll go to this estate sale. I'll just go later in the day after I take our son to school and all that kind of stuff. So that's why I got there late and it was also raining, which doesn't happen around here. And it was freezing cold for Southern California, probably like in the 50s. But I was not, I was not dressed for any kind of chilliness. I did not have an umbrella. It was just all around a little fiasco. <laughs> and so I had to wait outside in the sprinkles for, I think it was an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, something like that, waiting for my name to get called. It was a list situation. You sign your name up when you get there and then you just wait until it's your turn. And it's because they were limiting the number of people who were allowed in at a time, which is good. I still felt like it was super crowded in there. The line to check out went through the merchandise, it went through the selling tables. So it's like, as you're, looking for stuff. There's a big line of people standing there. So anyway, it's nothing's perfect. And this was just not perfect. Mostly the issue with this one was any of the stuff that I was interested in was either gone <laughs> or overpriced for resale. And in a lot of cases, even overpriced for current market full value. I was considering going back maybe the last day or the next it was a four day sale. So I could have gone back and there was discounts, but I didn't. 
I decided not to. I was re reevaluating the stuff that was there that I was interested in. And I was thinking, you know, even at 50% off on the last day, if it was still there, I still wouldn't want it. That's how overpriced I thought some of the stuff was. I, I thought because they had so much stuff, the prices would have been really cheap. Cause you would think if it's an estate sale, these people are just kind of desperate to get rid of it, especially that much stuff, but it just wasn't the case. So I don't know how it ended. I don't know if they got rid of everything. I don't know if they sold everything. I don't know if it's all still there. <laughs> I have no idea. But I will tell you what I did get. I got just a few little goodies. <laughs> I'll start with my big ticket item, even though this isn't the order that I found things, but still, this was my most expensive thing that I purchased. Well, actually, I take that back. It's tied with something else. But here is a pair of adorable holly candle salt and pepper shakers. You can see the holes right there. And obviously they're Christmassy. They're white with holly, green and red berry holly. They have the stoppers on the bottom. They don't have a mark, although, I mean, maybe I could peel this off. Maybe there's something underneath the sticker. Well, not on this one. And this one, no. You can kind of see in the top corner over here by the stopper, there's some pink or red kind of smudged off. So I think maybe these had a stamp that said Japan or something like that on there. They're very old and you can tell because of the crazing, which you're, is not gonna pick up on the camera, but there's crazing all throughout these. The red and the green are cold painted on, so they're on the outside of the glaze. And there's also some gold, which, you know, up here and little gold details, which I think just adds a lot to these. They were marked $10, but as the lady was ringing me up, she didn't flip them over to see that they had stickers on it. And she goes, salt and pepper shakers were $6 each a pair, right? $6 a pair. And um, I was like, well, they're marked $10 on these. And she's like, oh, okay, well, they should be six. And so she gave them to me for six. Fine. I was gonna pay $10 for them because it's just something that I'm gonna keep. I have a holly kind of collection, holly berry stuff for Christmas. That's one of the kind of looks that I go for. So I liked these, I thought $10 was a fine price for them. Ended up paying six, even better, <laughs> especially for something I'm gonna keep. I did get kind of a lot of Christmassy stuff. So maybe I'll just keep going with Christmas here. I don't know. These are just some some random gift bags and there's a couple sizes here. There's some bigger ones and some small ones. And there's the pattern on there. And that's really what drew my eye. I don't think these are particularly old just because they look too good inside. They look too white and crisp to me for me to think that they're particularly old. So uh, one, two little ones, one, two, three, four big ones. Maybe this is something I'll use at Christmas. Maybe I'll wrap something in these. Maybe I will cut them up and I don't know, maybe I'll send packages out wrapped in these at Christmas time. I don't know, but she charged me $2 for the bags, so fine. I really liked the graphics on them. The other Christmassy things were these two tins. These are both Christmassy. As you can see, this one was $5 and this one was $4. Go figure. This one's older. You can tell by the kind of the backs. This one says Tindeg, Tindeco, Tindeco. Maybe. This would be a good time for me to have glasses. Tin, it's definitely tin, the first part. And it looks like deco, deco. It looks like D-E-C-O, I think. Anywho, <laughs> this one's obviously somewhat new, newer. It's in really good shape. I just like the graphics on the front. Again, it's just pretty. Good for a Christmas display, good for holding your Christmas tags and your wrapping paper. I'm gonna take this price tag off of this one. So this one was five and it's considerably older. 
I don't know the, the dates of these tins. Tins are not something I normally purchase. There's the inside of that one. But I've been seeing them a lot on other people's sales and things. And I think people like to decorate with them. I would like to decorate with them too. So when I saw this box of tins kind of hidden underneath one of the tables, I thought mm, maybe the true collectors and the other resellers haven't found this yet. Maybe they sort of overlooked it. And that's why I was able to just sort of raid the tin bin and get a bunch of tins. This one I thought was really interesting. This one has a hinged lid and it was $4 as you can see. And it says, oh, it's dirty. Hang on, hold please for dirt removal. Hey, hey, no, I, I can't even guess. I cannot even guess what it says, but I see it says New York on it. And the graphics themselves on this were just cool. It's kind of kind of deco looking to me, but anyway, there you can see it. And again, like I said, it's hinged. Whoop. A little dirty inside, but not too bad. It's got a little dent on the lid here, which might be able to pop out. Nothing on the bottom, but I just thought that was kind of a neat looking tin. So why not? It had some age to it. It's got a little bit of that rusty, crusty and dusty on it. And that's what we like, isn't it? This one is super rusty. Talk about rusty. This one says Union Leader Cut Plug. So tobacco, right? Isn't that a tobacco thing? Plug, tobacco. And the front, it still has some of the paper attached to it, which I thought was kind of neat. And it's got the eagle. See, there's the paper labels there. And then the eagle on the front. And the eagle's on the back too, but it's just much more kind of rusted out on the back. The top is almost like you can almost hardly even not even see anything. And now a drop of droplet of something fell on there. Uh, this one was $3, as you can see. And I am going to just sort of give it a once over cleaning wise, just because, I mean, right now there's a droplet of goo on top and that doesn't look good. So I'm gonna have to clean it a little bit. Um, normally I just would leave the rusty, crusty stuff the way that it is, um, but there you go. There's the inside. I don't think this says anything on the bottom. It does not. So, ooh, filthy. Okay, last tin, second to last thing completely from that estate sale. This one was my favorite out of all of them. $6 I paid for this one. So this was the tied as the most expensive thing tied with the salt and pepper shakers. But this tin was crazy cool. It says sugar confectionery. This tin contains four pounds gross weight wrapped, three pounds, 14 ounces net weight without wrappers made in England by Wal Waller and Hartley Limited, George Street, Blackpool. So there you go. There's the bottom. And here's the front. I think, <laughs> I just love it. I'm looking at it on the screen. It looks even better somehow. The colors, the subject matter. You know, this is not mid-century graphics at all, but I adore it. Uh, something about it is just super appealing to me. And then there's the side. There's the look on the side. And you know, again, it's beat up. It's cr rusted and dirty and, oh, am I even gonna be able to open it? There we go. There you go. It's not too bad on the inside, honestly. It's really not. So that was the last of the tins as I'm covered in rust now. And the very last thing that I picked up there was this little plastic doodad. This was $3 and I had picked this up and I was looking at it and I didn't have anything else in my basket. And I was like, oh, that's kind of cute. It's plastic, it's probably 70s ish, but I had nothing else that I was buying. I was like, I don't want to wait in that line for a $3 little plastic owl who knows what it is. <laughs> so then once I found some other stuff that I wanted to buy, I went back and I grabbed this too. So it's like a planter 
or, well, I don't know. I'll just show you first. It's plastic and I don't know if you would hang it on the wall. It doesn't really have a hanger on the back per se, um, but it's got this little slot here. I don't think it would be a planter. I'm thinking maybe more like cards of some sort, recipe cards or note cards on a desk. It's flat completely on the bottom. So it sits, you know, it sits up like this. So to me, I think it's meant to be on a table. I don't know what it's for. I guess you just use it for whatever you want, but it's cute and it's got the owls on it and it's kind of like aged in a way. I don't know. I just was drawn to it and I bought it. I think it's cute. I think I can resell it for an amount of money more than what I paid for it. Okay, so that was it. That's all I got at that estate sale. I went through all that and I spent $33. <laughs> I was mentally prepared to spend hundreds of dollars at that estate sale on tons of different things. The pictures, I posted pictures of it, of like the preview pictures on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, you should because I post things more currently as they're happening. This will inevitably air a couple weeks after I've already gone to the sale. so. If you want to be up on what I'm doing in the moment, follow me on Instagram. It's just at Midcentury Wasted. And so many people were like, that's the best looking estate sale I've ever seen. That's the holy grail of all estate sales. They're, they have everything there. And it's like all the stuff, the red dot bowls, all those salt and pepper shakers. Those are just a couple things off the top of my head. The Delphite bowls, the Swedish modern Delphite teardrop shaped bowls. It was all gone. I didn't even get to see them. I didn't even get to think in my head, is this too expensive for me to buy? Because <laughs> they were just gone. So I don't know what they sold for. I don't know if they sold in a pre-sale. I don't know if just the first people who got there ran straight to them, grabbed them no matter what the price. I, I don't know what happened, but they were gone. So that estate sale was a bust. There were also, um, I kind of called it a you know what show afterwards because there were a lot of people, shoppers, I'll say, who were kind of making a stink about having to wait and all of that kind of stuff, how long the line was. And it's like, yeah, I'm complaining about it to you, <laughs> but I would never in the moment be sitting there being like, oh, this is just taking so long. Why can't they let more people in? Oh my God, I've been here for an hour already. It's raining. Like, like I was sitting there being like, what am I doing? What, what are my life choices that have put me in this position and I would never blame anyone else for me choosing to stand in the rain for an estate sale. Anyway, soapbox rant over. Now, moving on to estate sale number two, which actually happened before estate sale number one. This one was just something that I kind of spur of the moment went to like in the afternoon. Again, didn't go early. I didn't even really know that there was anything super special that I was going to try to get. It was one of those things where it's like, I haven't been to an estate sale in person in forever. I would like to go to this and see how I feel about the whole situation. And this one was fine. This one, you just walked right in. It had been going on for a few hours and it was relatively empty. And there wasn't a whole heck of a lot that I wanted there. But I found some goodies. And now I will say that the bulk of what I spent at this estate sale was stuff for Blake. He got um, a bin, or I got for him, via text message, him telling me, get that, yes. He got a bin of reel-to-reel -reel tapes and 45 records. And though that bin was $25. So that was the most expensive thing I bought. The second most expensive thing I bought was a record cleaning machine where you like stick the record in vertically and it spins on this little thing and it brushes it. I, I don't know. That was $15. He told me to buy that too. So I did. The other stuff, I got a couple things in the kitchen and then the rest of the stuff was in the garage and it was under a table in a bin of Christmas stuff. And that's how I like it. You gotta dig around a little bit, but you find some cute things. And I did find some cute things. One bag of things, I don't even know what's in it yet. I haven't even looked through it. I saw some old looking Christmas papers and I just 
took it to the front. So they gave me all of this Christmassy stuff for $7 and they gave me all of this kitchen stuff right here for $3. So I'll go through the kitchen stuff first. I got, still has salt and pepper in it by the way and it's everywhere right now. And I'm like getting high off this rancid pepper. More salt and peppers. These are the rose gold aluminum shakers. And I'm having a brain issue right now where I can't, Chromex. Hi, oh, dare I open it? So this goes with, I believe these are the Chromex ones that go, they don't say anything on the bottom, but they go with the canisters, the matching canister sets. If it's not Chromex, it's something, it's the knockoff that looks similar. This is the rose gold color. It's not showing up. They're not silver. They're a kind of a pinkish color, really. But anyway, it's just the salt and pepper. I wish the whole canister set was there because that can go for some pretty good money. But you know, these cost maybe a dollar for the, for the set. The rest is all restaurant wear. I love these little size like condiment bowls. I like just using these at home. And I've been, I know restaurant wear is kind of hot right now. And I could see as my kids get a little older, switching to restaurant wear more often, or at least using it more often, we kind of do the Corel thin flimsy things right now. But I can see switching to this too, because they're unlikely. I mean, they'd have to try really hard to break these, <laughs> you know, like, in a restaurant, like they use durable stuff so that it won't get broken super easy. These three little guys are all Buffalo China. This one, ooh, sorry. This one, the white one looks older just based on the stamp, but I don't really know because I don't, um, I haven't researched this yet, but there's the stamps on the bottom. And then this, little plate is Gibson housewares china microwave safe oh dishwasher and microwave safe so this is more of just like an everyday kind of heavy china these were originally all marked one dollar I think it was 50% off day when I was there so it was one two three four so it would been four dollars was two dollars the shakers were a dollar so but they're marked a dollar each for some strange reason. I don't know why you would buy only one shaker. You wouldn't. So they should have been marked as a pair. But anyway, $3 for all of that stuff, which was good. Now, Christmas, because who's ever sick of Christmas? Not me, not me. The first thing I'll show is this Hallmark set of bridge playing cards in the Holly pattern, which I just said, I, I like Holly pattern stuff. And these are the ones that are in the plastic Little plastic case and they're open. I didn't count them, I didn't bother. I figure they're all there. There's the cards and there's the backs in that pretty holly pattern. All of the Christmas stuff was $7 total for everything. So really I spent $10 on myself and I spent $30, $40 on Blake. You're welcome, honey. Then this is probably one of my, yeah, this is probably my favorite thing that I got out of the Christmas stuff. This is a little cross stitch says Merry Christmas. And on the back it says with love, Donna, 1985. And you know, I just, I can't resist stuff like this. It's adorable and it's handmade. And how cute is this gonna be? Just like sitting on a shelf with a bunch of Christmas decor. I love it. Next, I got these Lillian Vernon candlestick holders and they're still in the package and there's two of them and they got pretty cool packaging i don't know the date on these but they say made in korea on the sides and again there we go with the white holly berry thing i mean how good do these go together do these even match no they're a little different but they go very well together you know so and they've got some paint loss. They're cold painted, kind of just like these other ones. Crazing. I don't see any crazing on that one. This one's in good shape too. Again, a little bit of paint loss. There's the bottom. So it's Lillian Vernon. Yeah, I just thought those were pretty neat. Definitely my Christmas vibe. Okay, this next one is kind of funny because I have this already. It's Joy and it's got the little tassel 
and it hangs down. I have a Joy and a Noel, and these were kits. These were plastic canvas needlepoint kits. And then they've got the felt on the back with the little dangly tassels. So that's why you can find many of these. They're not some sort of, I mean, they're handmade, but they're not one of a kind handmade, you know, it was a kit. So now I have two joys and a Noel, and I don't know, am I selling a joy? Do I put joy in multiple places in my house? <laughs> we shall see come Christmas time or probably come thriftmas in July time when I pull out all my Christmas stuff and start selling it again. And then along the same vein was this little dancing bell belly Mrs. Claus or whatever it's supposed to be. She looks like she's doing a little shimmy. <laughs> I think it's just, it's a door hanger maybe, like a bell, you know, that would ring when you, doesn't ring very good. The bell's kind of a dud, but like when you open the door, it would ring. Anyway, <laughs> I kept finding these Christmas seals. And so I just kept grabbing them and piling them up. But, you know, ephemera, this is the ephemera portion of the show, which apparently I get ephemera every single time I go anywhere. I don't believe these are awfully old, maybe 90s, maybe even more recent than that. But here's foxes and cardinals and... I don't know, partridges in a pear tree or something like that. Here's American Lung Association. These have a few missing. These are really good things. Oh yeah, this says 1994. Um, these are really good things for package toppers at Christmas time, you know, tear off a portion of these and, you know, put it with a card or something for when I sell something on eBay or Etsy. Here's a hair, it says a snowshoe hair. I'm not gonna even go through all of these cause there's just so many, but you get the idea. Some of these have two from tags as part of it. These are the same as that. Here's a couple teddy bear ones. Yeah, you get the idea. Animals and ducks and whatnot. So big pile, massive pile of these yeah, Christmas seals. Lastly, whoa, lastly, which I'm kind of excited to go through because I haven't gone through it yet. I got this big bag of papers. And I don't know what all is in here. They kind of look like paper placemats. <laughs> I'm not sure. And they say Avon on the bag. It says Avon on the bag. So I don't know if I can ever get it out of the bag, then we'll see what's in here. There we go. Oh boy. What is this? Okay, we gotta start with this because I didn't see this in there at all. Oh my gosh, what's happening? What are you? I see a string, all right. What is this? I don't understand. Oh, it's so delicate. What are you supposed to be? It's so long. Is it more than one? Oh God, stuff's falling everywhere. Oh yeah, there's like, they're like attached. What is this? Well, I don't know what this is, but it was included in this pile of papers. It's like, a, it's long. Like when you open it all up, there's a lot of it in here. Hey, leave me a comment down below if you have any clue what that thing was. <clears throat> As I, die from dust inhalation. All right, now we've got something that I do know what it is. Paper doilies. Oh, it's got the package too. From Save On, <laughs> $1.99. I'll just tuck those back in there. That's cute. Oh, there's different. Oh, I see, I see. They're not all the same. These ones, that one goes with this. These ones are different. They're a little bit bigger. And hey, look, white and holly berry doilies. I like that. Okay, this is definitely a paper placemat and it's got some schmutz on it. So junk journaling, cut out the wreath, paste it onto something, that would work. This one's very cute. 
this is this is nice this is hallmark also look at how cute that is it's just a little paper probably a placemat really maybe just a round paper placemat or maybe this was just something that you would hang up on the wall at christmas time you know just one of those paper wall decor things but i love the graphics on that again i'm getting so much stuff with the holly and the berries how perfect oh okay here's the rest of these holly the bigger ones the bigger paper doilies oh my god this is so cute i think you guys are gonna like this one if i know you at all some of you are really gonna like this <laughs> It's little gingerbread people with little gumdrops and candy oranges and all of that. Peppermints and candy canes. Not traditional Christmas colors too. We got pink. That's cute. It's paper. Again, it's just one of those paper things. And then, oh, okay. Here's another one of these. And then two of these, which are also so cute. I scored in the paper department. Look at how cute that is. Look at the Santa. And the little woodland creatures everywhere. I love it. And then this is just cardboard and this is just cardboard. So that was just in there for support. So that's it. What do you guys think? <laughs> kind of a weird mix of stuff, honestly it's it's there's like no one thing that's all all that special really but all together i got some cute stuff so leave me comments please subscribe to my channel if you're new and you haven't subscribed yet that really helps me out a lot like this video i always forget to say all of this stuff but you should know the drill by now if you watch other channels which i'm sure you do thank you for watching it really means a lot to me. And I got some really fun stuff coming up. I'm just saying, you're gonna wanna subscribe and turn on the bell. I might be going live before too long. So anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.